What if you're moving to Salem, Oregon, but you've never visited the city? How are you supposed to know where to buy a house? Well, in this video, I'm gonna help you answer that exact question by taking you on a deep dive tour of downtown Salem. You are either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it, but either way, you are about to learn if downtown Salem is the right neighborhood for you. We are gonna pull up a map and break down the neighborhood, but I'm also gonna be showing you first person footage from the exact areas we're discussing. Stick around until the end, because I'm gonna be sharing with you the top reasons why my YouTube clients are wanting to move into downtown Salem. My name is Clarity Odd, and I'm a local real estate agent here in Salem who specializes in relocations. And just like you, I relocated to Salem once upon a time. Now I get to make videos all about this amazing city for you, my future clients. If you wanna hire me to be a real estate agent here in Salem, all you gotta do is book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. You can find a link to get on my calendar down below in the description. All right, let's jump right on in. Downtown Salem is incredibly cute and charming, and it really does have a lot going for it. But unfortunately, one of the things that it really doesn't have a whole lot of is living options. And if you are anything like me, the idea of living in an industrial style loft with brick walls and big beams and great city views, that's a dream come true. And you might be thinking to yourself that Salem and living downtown might provide you with that exact opportunity. Well, if that's your dream, then I'm about to be the bearer of bad news because while downtown Salem is incredibly cute and filled with a lot of historic and older brick buildings, there really isn't a lot of opportunity to actually live in those buildings or the downtown area in general. But before we get into all of that and some of the options that are actually available to you if you want to live in downtown Salem, let's first learn where downtown Salem is located. Downtown Salem is located right here along the Willamette River. It divides West Salem from the other half of Salem, which technically is East Salem, but no one identifies it as that. It's just West Salem, and then you have the rest of Salem. Salem's also the state capital of Oregon, which means that we have the state capitol building and a lot of other government buildings downtown. Overall, downtown Salem is a major destination. It's very cute, it's very charming, and dare I even say, it is quintessential. But what a lot of people don't know about downtown Salem is that we have a really beautiful and robust riverfront park right along the Willamette River. We have wonderful city parks right across from that riverfront park called Minto Brown Park. And we also have a university in downtown Salem called Willamette University. Downtown Salem is also home to some of my personal favorite eateries like Mana, which is a bread spot. And it makes sense because I'm about 99 percent made up of bread and then I'm also about 95 percent made up of sugar and that math doesn't math but it doesn't matter. Beyond my favorite eateries, downtown also has a lot of my favorite date night spots like Coin Jam, which is a local arcade, and then one of my favorite restaurants called Cozy Taberna. To me, downtown Salem has always felt more like a destination rather than an all-in-one entertaining, working, and living space. And I think that this really comes down to the fact that downtown Salem is pretty void of condo and housing options. That is changing, and there are more apartment buildings that are going up in the downtown area, but overall, I feel like downtown Salem is currently in its growth and expansion phase. But because there are not a lot of condos and housing options downtown right now, in the evening and the nighttime, it gets very, very quiet down there and void of people, which can feel really strange if you're used to a really hustling and bustling busy metropolitan area. So if you're considering downtown living and you like the idea of a large city and that hustle and that bustle, you do need to be mindful that you are not going to get that here in downtown Salem. And this is coming from a gal who loves city living and lived in downtown Portland for many years. If I had the expectation of moving into downtown Salem and it being anything like living in downtown Portland, I would be severely disappointed because downtown Salem, while it does have those city vibes, 
it's very quiet compared to a larger metropolitan area. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially if that is exactly what you are looking for. If you're finding value in this video so far, be a cool cat and give it a thumbs up and go down to the comments and tell me why you would prefer to live in downtown Salem over any other part of Salem. In downtown Salem, you are gonna find two main condo complexes and then there are gonna be a handful of others that are kind of scattered and hidden in these older downtown Salem buildings. And if you just thought to yourself like, oh my God, um, that is the type of building that I want. I want to live in a hidden old condo building in downtown Salem. Well, friends, <laughs> if you have unlimited time and you have unlimited money, sure we can make that happen. Because we only have two main condo complexes in downtown Salem that oftentimes have units that are up for sale, we really don't have just one zone in downtown that is purely residential or condo living in downtown Salem, which means that the condo buildings that are available, they're just kind of scattered throughout the other businesses of downtown Salem. The condo buildings that we have in downtown Salem are pretty darn cute, and most oftentimes they're gonna give you either good views of the city or the Willamette River. The first condo building that we have is located right here off of Front Street. This condo building is going to give you really great views of the Willamette River. It has parking, but unfortunately, if you have any sensitivity to noise, this option might not be the best fit for you because Front Street does get pretty loud during high commuting hours. When you're inside the condo, the noise isn't nearly as bad, but this con should definitely be a consideration for you if you don't like the idea of being right on top of a busy road. The other condo building that we have is located right here off of Church Street. This condo building is gonna give you views of the cityscape and also has parking options. This condo is gonna be a bit quieter, but it doesn't have as great of views as the front street condos. Both are gonna be good options and it really comes down to what you're looking for in a condo complex in the downtown area. Both condos of course have HOA dues, but that's just how it is with condos. Condo living in downtown Salem is gonna be most ideal for anyone who is looking for convenience and likely works from downtown. Living in the city is all about giving you optimal convenience and Salem condos, they're no different. They give you the perfect blend of convenience and living in the heart of a really charming city. If you are coming from an area that has a lot of high rise condo buildings and those massive condo complexes with amenities like pools, concierge service, robust parking structure, dog wash areas, or anything of that nature, you're gonna need to dial back your expectations because here in Salem, these smaller condo complexes, they are not nearly as robust as what you could find in a bigger city. And again, that is not a bad thing. It's just setting the right expectations up front if you are interested in condo living. Because there's not a lot of condo options in the downtown area to begin with, they do tend to come on the market and go off the market fairly quickly. And the prices that they command might be a bit shocking to you. So let's pull up some recently sold condos in the downtown area so that we can gain a little bit of perspective around the overall cost to purchase a condo in downtown Salem. What we're looking at right now is the past two years of sold condos in downtown Salem. And as you can see here, there are just these two little buildings that have sold units. Let's filter these condos from the highest sold price point to the lowest. The first one that pops up is a two bedroom, two bath unit that sold for $850,000, which I will be honest, for me, this feels like big city price tags, but because we have limited inventory in the amount of condos that we actually have for sale, these condos that do come up for sale they can command high prices. Real estate is all about supply and demand, and we have the demand, we just don't have much supply. These condos here right on Front Street, they have really great views because they are looking directly over the Riverfront Park in downtown Salem, which is right next to the Willamette River. So these are all facing west, and you have really, really great views. You're also gonna find some more economically feasible condos in the downtown area that are smaller 
or they might just not have as great of views. And these condos tend to sell pretty quickly as well because again, there's just not a lot of inventory or condos for sale at any given time. And as a reminder, what we're looking at right now is the past two years of sold condos in Salem. We only have 13 sold units. And as you can tell, I'm trying to paint this picture here that if you are wanting condo living in downtown Salem, you're likely gonna have to sit on the sidelines and wait for one to pop up, which is okay. Hey, we can totally do that. I just don't want you to get super excited about condo living in downtown Salem. And then you realize that you have like one or zero opt options to choose from. So we've talked about condos in downtown Salem and how there's limited inventory around them. And you might be wondering if there's actually standalone stick built houses in downtown Salem that aren't condos. And the answer is yes, we have single family homes in the downtown area as well. But again, there are not a lot of options. And as you can see here, the outline of downtown Salem, this upper section here, that is where you're gonna find just a handful of single family houses. But they do tend to be older and smaller and oftentimes they do need renovations. But there are some really cool older homes in this area that are nearly a hundred years old. I do want to mention that you need to be mindful of flood zones in this northern part of downtown Salem. And this is going to be especially true if you're wanting to purchase anything close to Mill Creek, which is in a partial flood zone. And as you can see here on the FEMA flood map, this stripey area is currently designated as a flood zone where you will need to chat with your insurance provider to learn about flood insurance. Isn't that what all of us want to do on our weekends is call our insurance provider and chat about flood insurance? If you're like, oh, no worries, flood zones, they don't scare me at all then great, these houses are a really great option. And I am kind of making light of this, but there are only a handful of houses that you really need to worry about the flood zone. A lot of them do not fall into the flood zone area, but the ones that do, they always happen to be these super cute little charming cottages. It's so unfair. But either way, if you like the idea of living in this little upper part of downtown Salem, you do have a handful of options for single family detached homes in this northern part. If you're jonesing on the idea of living in downtown Salem, condo living is gonna be a really great option for you. If you have time on your side and you can wait for a condo to pop up on the market, and if you don't mind living in a one bedroom, one bath, you are gonna have an easier time finding a condo that pops up on the market just because those ones seem to be the type of condos that come up most frequently. With enough time, you're also gonna see some two bed, two bath condos pop up. But again, it's just gonna take you waiting on the sidelines and waiting for one to pop up because those are more rare than the smaller units. One of the largest benefits to living in downtown Salem is that you can really have a carless lifestyle. I feel like Salem is 100% car dependent because you really do need to jump in your car to get to your favorite grocery store or to the farmer's market or go to work. And overall, I feel that Salem is not a very walkable city. We don't have a trolley system or a streetcar, and it just feels like the, the city was constructed for cars rather than pedestrians, which is really unfortunate. But the one caveat to this is that if you live in downtown Salem, you can probably get around without your car just fine. You are gonna be close to the farmer's market and potentially if you work from home or you might be working in the downtown area, you just open up your door and you can walk to work or walk to the farmer's market. Condo living is gonna afford you the lifestyle of being car free and opening up your door and having all of Salem at your disposal. Some of the best amenities that are offered in the downtown area are gonna be all of the parks that you have easy access to, like Minto Brown Park, which is located right here across the Willamette River. And this has one of the best off-leash dog areas that I have ever encountered. It also has ample walking paths that are paved and unpaved, which is great if you're lazy like me and you're like, I wanna get outside, 
but I don't want to commit to a full hike. You're also going to have access to the Riverfront Park, which has an amphitheater and it has community events and festivals every year. And then you're also going to be in walking distance of Bush Park, which is actually just outside of downtown proper, but it has things like a rose garden and an art gallery, and it hosts a lot of other events like the art fair every single summer. You are also going to be able to walk to the Oregon State Capitol building, and you can just putz around Willamette University campus, which is very, very beautiful. And then to top it all off, you have the Salem Library, which is located right here. Some of the largest cons to living in downtown Salem is the fact that while you do have access to the farmer's market, it doesn't actually run all year round, which means that you are gonna have to supplement your grocery shopping needs with going to an actual grocery store. And the one and only grocery store, which is Safeway, is located right here on the eastern edge of downtown. This is probably my least favorite Safeway to go to because it is very small and it doesn't offer a big selection of items, but the trade-off is that you can walk to it and that in itself is a huge benefit. The other large con that I see about living in downtown downtown Salem is the fact that downtown Salem feels like a destination and because of that it gets very quiet at night and I don't know about you but I do not like the feeling of silence when I'm walking around downtown in the evening time or after it gets dark. It feels a little bit spooky and a little bit eerie especially when you consider that most of the year here it gets dark relatively early in the day. Downtown Salem is going to be great for you if your primary focus is living in a condo or you wanna live a lifestyle that's car free. And if at this point in the video, you're thinking to yourself, this is a lot of information, how am I ever gonna remember any of it? Well, you don't need to remember any of it. The only thing that I want you to remember is that when you have decided you are relocating to Salem and you are ready to purchase a home or a condo, schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me so that we can set up a relocation plan tailored to your needs. You can book that one-on-one -on -one consultation and get on my calendar down below in the description. Let's talk about some of the main streets in downtown Salem and the ones that you're likely going to be depending on the most. We are gonna start talking about the North and South streets before we discuss the popular East to West streets. Running North to South, we have Commercial Street, Liberty Street, and 12th Street. All three of these main roads are going to get you to other places around Salem, but these are going to be your main commuting streets within the downtown area as well. I mention Commercial Street in almost all of my videos because that is the main street for almost all of the neighborhoods in Salem. On this section of Commercial Street, you of course are gonna have access to all of the shops and retail spaces because you're in downtown Salem, but you're also going to have things like angled parking, access to parking garages, and Commercial Street is gonna give you access to the West Salem Bridge. Commercial Street also connects you to the convention center and is going to be home to many, many local businesses that you are going to frequent a lot if you live in the downtown area. This includes Mana, which again is my favorite bakery and feeds my bread addiction. Marshall Street is a one-way street that only allows you to drive south on it. This is important because our downtown is set up in a way where we do have a lot of one-way streets. So the takeaway here is that Commercial Street is popular in many sections of Salem, but this is especially true for downtown Salem because it is one of the main commuting streets in downtown, but is also home to many shops, restaurants and entertainment venues as well. The next street that we have is Liberty. Liberty and Commercial Street are like sisters, <laughs> but while Commercial Street shuffles you south, Liberty is the counterpart that is going to take you north through downtown Salem. Liberty Street has less parking than commercial, but it's home to just as many restaurants and shops and entertainment venues. So no matter if you are walking or you are driving in the downtown area, you will be using both commercial and Liberty Street a whole heck of a lot. There are a lot of other north to south streets that we could mention, but I'm gonna leave those to you to discover on your own. We are gonna wrap up the north to south street breakdown by talking 
talking about 12th Street, which is located right here on the edge of downtown. This street runs north to south and hugs the train tracks, which means sometimes you're gonna get stuck when you are trying to cross those train tracks. But since we don't have too many trains passing through town, you can expect it to be an infrequent delay. 12th Street is gonna be less populated with restaurants and shops and entertainment venues than commercial or Liberty Street. 12th Street is more about commuting than anything else. But what you will find on 12th Street is Safeway. And this is gonna be the Safeway that we were talking about earlier, the one and only grocery store in downtown Salem. And unfortunately, this is my least favorite Safeway for two reasons. I already told you the first reason, which is that it's small and there's not a lot of options available to you. But the second reason, is because of the theft that goes on in this Safeway. It is just through the roof. And honestly, this one particular Safeway should be named Danger Way because every time that I've gone into this Safeway location without fail, somebody is just walking out of the store with a bag full of stuff and security on their tail. So the takeaway here is that 12th Street is mostly functional for commuting and it also has Danger Way. 12th Street is on the edge of downtown while Commercial and Liberty Street are more about commuting within the downtown proper area. At this point, it is worth mentioning that Interstate 5 does not cut through downtown Salem. I-5 is located right here and it would take you about 10 to 20 minutes to connect with I-5, just depending on the traffic. But I've always found it a little bit funny that Interstate 5 doesn't connect closer to downtown Salem, but at least it's easy enough to jump on Interstate 5 when you take the right road headed out east, which leads us really well into our discussion about east to west roads that you should be aware of. We have Marion Street, Center Street, and Mission Street. Now again, there are a whole lot of streets in downtown Salem that you're gonna be using with a lot of frequency. These are simply the ones that I use most and find to be the fastest when I need to actually commute somewhere. Marion Street is located right here and is a westward only street. It's four lanes, and this is the street that will take you from Danger Way, which we were talking about earlier, AKA Safeway, <laughs> all the way into West Salem and the West Salem Bridge, which if you continued on, if you didn't wanna get off at West Salem, you could end up getting yourself to places like Dallas, Monmouth, or Independence, or even the Orion Coast. Marion Street, much like 12th Street, is going to be all about functionality and commuting. While it does cut through downtown, it means naturally you're gonna have access to, you know, everything that downtown Salem has to offer, but it really is more about getting you from point A to point B. Marion Street does get pretty congested during commuting hours, especially around the darn West Salem Bridge. This area here is where we get most of the gridlock and traffic in downtown because it just seems like the flow of the roads in this particular section really isn't very good and it just always ends up in gridlock. When we're talking about gridlock traffic here, you need to just add about 10 to 15 minutes to your commute time to account for that traffic, which in my mind, coming from a bigger city, that's not really bad at all. Do be mindful that there is a red light camera at this section right here before you actually get onto the West Salem Bridge. So be careful about that because it works. And one might say it works too well. The next street on our list is Center Street. Center Street is the sister street to Marion Street because Center Street is a two-way street outside of downtown. But once you get into the downtown area, for the most part, Center Street turns into a one-way road leading you towards the east. Funny enough, although Center Street takes you out eastward to Interstate 5, it doesn't actually connect you with Interstate 5. Rather, it goes over Interstate 5. It's kind of a strange one, but Center Street is gonna be the street that shuffles you off of the West Salem Bridge. So again, this is gonna be a very popular street for you likely. This street has four lanes for most of the downtown area, and it's gonna take you right past the Oregon State Capitol building. This is a commuter street, and you aren't gonna find much retail or business along this street, at least not compared to some of these other streets that we've already talked about. The last street on our list is Marion Street, which is located right here. I am calling this the wrong name. This is Mission Street, not Marion, Mission Street. So from now on, I'm gonna have fun with it and say, fuck it, I'm gonna beep out all of the uh, Marions that I accidentally say. Marion Street is the dividing line between downtown Salem and the South Central neighborhood. Street is a two lane, 
two-way road, which means it gets kind of tight. It's a popular street, and it's a street that you might take to get either to a fun place like Bush Park or a not-so-fun place like the Salem Hospital. Street has the ability to shuffle you on to 99E, which you can then take to jump onto Interstate 5 to either go north or south. This street is all about commuting and functionality like other streets on this list, and so there are very few businesses along street when we compare it to some of the other downtown streets that we've talked about. With all of the roads and really any section of Salem, you're going to find that most of them are going to funnel you or push you into downtown Salem. And this is really just how the entire city was constructed. Downtown Salem is like the base kind of tippy point of a larger funnel. Everything redirects you to downtown Salem, which means it's an incredible launching pad to get outward of downtown Salem to any other part of the city. If you are somebody who likes the hustle and the bustle and the hum of city life, you're really not gonna find a high intensity or energy level in the downtown Salem area, but you are still gonna find a downtown that is vibrant and is gonna give you a lot of amenities right at your doorstep. Downtown Salem feels like it's growing and it's expanding and it's blooming, and my hope is that more condo complexes will begin to pop up in the downtown area because I think it's something that the city could use a lot more of. If your primary focus is living car free or you just like the idea of living in the heart of the city, condo living might be a really great option for you. My YouTube clients who are wanting to relocate to Salem and move into the downtown area generally have a budget of $550,000 or more. But more importantly, they have time on their side so that they can sit and wait for a condo to pop up on the market. If you are ready to talk about developing a plan for your future relocation here to Salem, book that one-on-one -on -one consultation with me so that we can talk all about what the best next steps for you are in this adventure. If you enjoyed this video, you are gonna wanna watch this one next. Bye friends.